Okay. Lights out. Okay. And lights out here. And Marilyn will be with you in a minute. Be present. You had to be present. You had to be in the middle of it. It's like chaos. Chaos is interesting. I have all these little terms. Chaos is interesting. Fighting is interesting. Uh, reality is interesting. Um, much more so than creating something, creating whatever that means. But reality is really the most interesting thing. George Zimbel came into the world of photography at a time in which the world, looking back now, seems innocent. Magazines were in their heyday. News magazines like Life, and Look, and Post. And, but what they published isn't what we publish today. They didn't tend to go after people. And documentary photography was largely at its core, sympathetic. It was a liberal position. The more you look at that picture, the more it gives you the willies. Because you could never do that picture again. You could never get that close, unimpeded, to a political candidate, be it in Canada or the United States. You, you had access, they weren't worried. They weren't worried. They didn't need all this control. That's a very modern thing, and uh, I hate it. I really hate it. Forty years ago, your privacy was something that, you know, was just protected because there wasn't any reason to be suspicious. I mean, we're never worried about photographers coming in and invading their privacy. And I think with a lot of photojournalism, uh, and certainly with paparazzi and celebrity culture, the acquisition of the photograph is the be-all and end-all. And it doesn't matter how you get it or where you get it or why you get it. There's almost this insatiable desire for people to find flaws. And so photographs, instead of being used to celebrate, I think a lot of photographs are being made to denounce that suspicion would make it difficult for someone like George to make these photographs now because of that suspicion that, you know, if this isn't his daughter, people aren't going to want some guy taking photographs of their daughter. It's like, well, why are you taking pictures of my daughter? Did you know that Marilyn Monroe was photographed here? No, they don't. OK, now, see, there's the 52nd Street sign. And, uh... What can I say? This is where it was. I couldn't aspire to anything higher than to feel the desire to make you my own para para patuli The photography community was a hell of a lot more collegial then than it is now. This, I think there's a lot of competition. There's not as much work around, maybe. But anyway, um, so there I was at Pix as a stringer, and uh, George Carger, who was a very influential New York photographer, he did a lot of Broadway shows. George asked me if I wanted to go photograph one of the most famous movie stars in the world. And I thought he was kidding me, so I said, Mae West. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, no, Marilyn Monroe. I said, oh, yeah, that would be great. And he says, here, here's my credentials. Now, that's fantastic. No assignment, nobody telling me what to do, no deadline, just go and take photographs. I ended up shooting right into the Klieg lights, which are a wonderful part of the photographs. 
The, the, the quality of those negatives was amazing, beautiful. And so I, I was there, I did the shoot, I developed the film, I lived on 35th Street and 2nd Avenue, got home, I guess, four o'clock in the morning, got it all developed, hung up the film. Next day, I cut the film, put it in envelopes, and there it sat for, till 1976. So we're talking about 1954. And uh, I had, I was working on another assignment, so I just put the negatives away. And um, I didn't try to get them published. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure why, but I didn't. Well, there were lots of other photographers there. C'était une conférence de presse, ces photos de Marilyn. C'était purement une conférence de presse qu'on donnait. C'était pour faire une publicité pour un film. The shoot was about two hours. Um, what happened was at one point when they started doing the uh, skirt thing, the crowd got a little bit <laughs> unruly, I would say. I bet you there were two or three hundred people. They were behind the police lines, and uh, my idea was that I was using a Leica camera. It was very quiet. So even though they said no more shooting, I took a few frames. And the next thing I knew, I was uh, behind the police line. But fortunately for me, that was a very good place to be. <laughs> so I just kept shooting where the barrier was, and, and the, that was fine. Tous les autres journalistes qui étaient là ont fait la photo de Marilyn avec la robe d'un puis elle est apparue dans les journaux. Lui, il circulait, il a fait quelque chose d'autre qui fait que sa photo est complètement différente des autres. C'est l'image de l'image, en fait. Ces photos sont mille fois meilleures que toutes les qui sont publiées. C'est que les photos sont le résultat de cette forme de ser. Il est d'accord, c'est un photographe que antepone su compromiso personal a, a, a la fama o, a, o al éxito, tanto económico como político. It wasn't really what I do. I don't do celebrity. But now I look at the shoot and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I think it was uh, well done. And, uh, and it was a story too. So like one of my favorites is Billy Wilder and her, and uh, Joe DiMaggio was there. Um, Uh, Walter Winchell, the, the good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America. This is Walter Winchell. So I have the story. Marilyn was an absolute pro. She was in control of everything that she did. Every spontaneous, sexy move was not spontaneous at all because it could be repeated and repeated and repeated on request if you needed her to do it again. This was the greatest publicity stunt that was ever devised, but it really was a shoot. And uh, the still photographers just were eating it up. They, they thought, wow, this is incredible, this is incredible. DiMaggio was around when they were getting ready to do the scene. What happened then was, as the scene progressed, as the fans blew the skirt higher and higher, he obviously got more and more agitated. He said to Winchell, let's get out of here. So they, this is right in the middle of a scene. They walked right in front of the cameras and off the set. Silence on the set. It was quiet then. And that's when I shot Sirius Marilyn. George also photographed not just Marilyn the icon, but Marilyn the person and in the picture that he calls the serious Marilyn, where the Marilyn who was so desperate to be accepted as a serious actress and as somebody who uh, had a craft and knew what her craft was, Um, he gets a contemplative moment of her, and I don't, there aren't many pictures of her like that. There are a few, but um, that's consistent with his approach. Find that humanity 
in his subject and then make it visible in such a way that the rest of us would connect with it. The first time they were exhibited, that's when I really started to feel what was there. And now those pictures from that shoot, I think they're in, I don't know, nine or 10 museum collections. So somebody loved them. And the still, it was the still pictures that survived more than the film. And when you say Marilyn, that's what people think of. I, I always w wished that she had lived to an old age. I wanted to see her as an older woman, you know, and it's, it re that's really sad if you ask me. Nobody asks me those questions. Okay, so we're ready now? Ready, Monsieur. Okay, so then I'll shut this down. Okay, now. It's interesting when you do test strips. Sometimes a test strip looks perfect. And you say, oh, this is it. Now this is not perfect. This is not perfect. It's close, but it's not perfect. And, and let's see what else I have here. Okay, so here you have two different prints. It's almost the same, except look at her face. Her face is beautiful in this picture. And this, by just by dodging it about 10 seconds or five, no, five seconds, it lightens the face up and it looks so much more alive. It's beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna do another test. And I said we'll do eight seconds. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I wanna do this a little bit. Okay, and then I'll just do this. And let's just see what happens. Okay, here we go. Ah, well. Well. Who? Oh, it's the bolsa. Isn't that dress amazing? Yeah. And you know, you know the guys who were running the fans. They knew just what to do. It was just fantastic. With printers like George, like they'll go through you know, a day or two days working on a new negative until it achieves what they pre-visualize. So to finally get a print to that stage is uh, a real labor of love. And it's something that is necessary for the photographer to yeah. do. Yeah. So the early ones will be glossy matte dried. Mm -hmm. and uh, one of my photo dealers said to me, uh, what I do is I sell prints. I don't sell your photographs, I sell prints. This is my favorite. Yeah, we talked about this one before. Yeah. Photography used to be like a classic trade where you would work with the materials, learn how to use them, and just spend the rest of your life getting better and better and better at it. Whereas photographers, certainly in the last 20 years, you're probably on camera number 15 right now if you're a professional. Whereas, you know, if you had a Leica in the 50s, you know, as long as it's been maintained, you're still using that same Leica and the same lenses. Photography and film are the two arts of the 20th century. I'm not sure the 21st century is going to be so kind to photography. Young people are less interested in museums. We had a teacher call recently and cancel having the class come to the museum to see the original works because they could see them on their iPads. And 
that means that they're not getting that difference, that those subtleties that George is so laboring to get in his prints. They're not even valuing it or connecting to it. Il y a tellement de filtres. Les images sont tellement médiatisées. Même si on prend des photos contemporaines, il y a encore, il y a toujours cette média, médiatisation. Tandis que Georges, à son époque, il n'y avait pas cette médiatisation. Ce qu'on prenait, c'était le réel. Et genre, souvent, c est, c est, ce sont des portraits d'une vie. When you get to be my age, a lot of people are gone. Yeah. And you say, no, then, no, first it's very bad. And then you say, oh, we come and we go. That's the nature of things. Yeah. Just don't try not to go too fast. Yeah. <laughs>